Welcome to a new adventure with James and Seymour. Pretty painful. This time we made our way towards the famed Benagil Caves of southern Portugal. With its hole in the ceiling, the many different layers of colorful rock types and birds who nest in the crevices of the walls, it is a sight to see for young and old. Apart from other advertisements all around the south coast that offer a overpriced trip to the cave, we got word of mouth from our friend Danielle that it is a must see. So we hopped onto our bikes and decided to freeball it more or less straight across the coast of the Algarve. Unfortunately, we got lost a couple of times and had to manage a not all too ideal terrain. We got a flat tire. Great. In the end, it took us more than three hours to get to our destination. And about how to get to the cave itself, that is scary. You cannot access it by foot and somehow need to make your way through a short strip of water. Damn. We decided to just swim there. You know, Portugal is still warm and sunny in December when we made the trip, but the ocean is not quite up to temperature for the whole winter and it feels more like a torturous ice bath. So what, right? Stay fucking hard! I have to mention at this point that I was really optimistic and that it was essentially my idea to just swim over. James on the other hand was quite concerned about potential dangers, like the current, sharp rocks in the water or hypothermia. Are you even trained in swimming? Do you think you could actually make it all the way over? I don't know bro, we're talking about some hundred meters, cold water or not, this really isn't anything. You ready? Somewhat. It's gonna be challenging. It's even possible, okay? Yeah, it should be possible, I guess. So, I went ahead with swimming goggles on to scout the water. And after a short swim, we made it over in what turned out to be a walk in the park. I'm not gonna lie, once in the cave is pretty great. The sunset was in full effect and comfortably warmed up the whole interior, including our heat-stripped bodies. But after a short minute of enjoyment, Seymour decided to launch the drone. I guess the shots he would collect would be worth breaking the ambient silence, but, unfortunately, he got a little confused at one point. I just uh, crashed the drone into the wall and it landed somewhere, so now I'm gonna try to get it. <laughs> awesome. Great. Man, it's sitting right there. It wouldn't be an adventure unless Seymour crashed his drone into the wall. <laughs> well, he's got it. Oh my god. Oh. I got the drone, it's all good. And now I got a stone on the to uh, put it in this bag and get back. Uh, yeah, but we good. So far, so good. Let's do it. There he is. It's a crazy dude. How was the rescue mission, sir? Sir, it's, 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 it's the drone. Is the drone okay? <laughs> Look at this special services soldier. That's why I call special services. Is the drone fucked? Oh, it's completely okay. Nice. Like I have no idea, man. It landed? It landed, bro. It was like, like that. It got stuck. It wow. couldn't. 
easily, easily <laughs> fall into the water. Bro, you're gonna give me a heart attack, man. In the end, we had a great time. It was a day packed with endurance training, amazing scenery, and solid action. And luckily, the drone didn't get a scratch. But honestly, the journey was pretty much uh, greater than the destination. It was a cool cave. Don't get me wrong. But it's just a fucking cave. And there's a lot of greater sights all around. Thanks for watching, everybody. James out. <laughs>